Thank you very much. This is Princess Lillian Study, and in today's video, I'm going to be discussing growing peppers in bags and keeping our peppers alive for a long time. Because a lot of the time we grow peppers, and we assume that after it has fruited in that year, that's just the end of its life. That's not really the case. When you plant pepper in one year and it produces, it goes to rest and it's going to produce again the following year. So the fact that that pepper has gone to rest does not mean you should get rid of it. You should try to keep it, trim it, and wait for the following year when it's going to come back. A lot of the times we just uproot it on the rest of the garden until we are done with. When a pepper plant comes back for its second year, it's going to produce massively more pepper plants than the first year. I got to learn this because I was almost surprised why would so many people be growing on other gardeners and my own pepper plant would have just 50 peppers. And then somebody said to me, yeah, this pepper is three years old. This pepper is two years old. And the age is great. is five years old, six years old. The pepper is a plant that is supposed to live for about six to eight years. you would do is you would shift it from where it's receiving so much sunlight place it where it's a little more shaded so that this plant knows it's time to rest after having produced so much pepper during the season it needs to rest and recuperate so that it can come back the following year and then it will produce more peppers but one thing that we need to do is you cut off a lot of the branches. In fact, most of the branches of the pepper plant would have to be cut off. You cut off most of the branches and just leave about this Y on it. You can see this pepper plant is so sparse. When it was outside, it had hundreds of leaves. But because I wanted to keep it for the following year after it has produced peppers for me. I brought it in 
and I took out all the leaves. I just have six leaves, five really. It's a new one just that I grew. I just have five leaves left on it. Even the five leaves may be too much. I can just decide to reduce it to just two leaves growing on it. That's all the number of leaves you need to tide it over until the next year. This will send a message to this plant to rest so that when the new growing season comes back the following year, it can start to grow again. If you're living in a tropical climate where it's not going to get killed by the cold weather, it may get killed by the habitat. So you'd still have to keep it protected during the very cold season. You'd have to keep your pepper plant protected. You cut off the leaves, the branches, and make sure you only have a very short portion attached to the soil. That's all you have left. That is what the pepper plant needs. That's the care you give to it after it has finished producing its peppers. There are times you will see this pepper doesn't stop producing. You can leave that one. But if you now notice a reduction, if a pepper plant at some point was producing 15, 20 peppers in three days that you're harvesting, and you now start noticing that it's just struggling to ripen one or two, that is the time for you to allow your peppers to rest. And in temperate countries, we call this overwintering. That is, you are keeping it alive over the winter season. In tropic season, it's just keeping it alive, just caring for it. Doesn't have any specific name, but you still have to care for this pepper plant to assure that it remains alive when the new season comes and it starts to rain again. Over the period when it has gone to rest, you need to protect it from such things that eat leaves and plants. You don't want it to get eaten up. You want to protect it because if you cut your, uh, your pepper plant and it's not protected and you have some goats or some other ruminant animals in the, in the neighborhood, they will probably just eat it up and it will not be able to come back the following year. What you notice a lot of the times is that even if you cut your pepper plant all the way to the ground, it grows just like the weed. If you cut a weed all the way to the ground and you didn't uproot this weed, the roots will enable it to grow again the following season. But we don't advise that you do that for the pepper plant because it's a 50-50 situation. You're just reducing the chances of this pepper plant coming back. What's going to increase the chance of your pepper plant coming back is if it has just a small portion of it that still remains at a stem above the soil level and then you keep it. Now, when I first cut this pepper plant, the top of it was fresh, and I had to make consideration for the fact that about one or two inches will get dry and go away. And that has happened, although it's just less than half an inch that has got dry. So I know that this plant still remains alive after I have cut it and prepared it for the following year. So when you have a pepper plant and it's producing during the time of harvesting, you will want to go out and harvest your peppers as frequently as every three days. And you can even harvest the green ones. You can harvest your green peppers and bring them indoor and they will ripen. The reason why we do this is to encourage the pepper plant to produce more peppers because the pepper plant needs a message that you need the peppers. If you leave the peppers right on and you are waiting for them to ripen over there, the pepper plant will be slowed down because it's helping to ripen your pepper. 
if you've taken them off while they are just trying to turn, the ant properly ripen, that is a very good stage to take out your pepper plant. Once you bring it indoors, within three days, the pepper will become ripe. This is a very sure way of treating a pepper plant and making it to grow bigger. The pepper plant itself would need specific care before it starts producing for you. So now I'm going to talk about actually growing the pepper plant from seeds. You'd want to grow your pepper plant either from shop-bought seeds, which is the most advisable gardening practice. You want shop-bought seeds or seeds that you got from a friend and you're sure that these seeds actually produce well. So you use these pepper seeds and that's what you do to encourage good growth in your pepper plants. A lot of the time, somebody who has collected seeds and given them to you would have washed them to make sure that they will grow well. What I do when I collect pepper seeds is I have um, aspirin, just one 50 milligram tablet that I put into water. So I just use this as green water to rinse the pepper seeds that I collect. And this will keep the pepper seeds safe. It's just the same as the pepper seeds that we buy from the shops. They harvest the seeds and they wash it in any liquid that is going to be able to reduce the growth of foreign, you know, we have bacteria and um, other microorganisms in the atmosphere. So all those things that's going to reduce their growth has been taken care of by washing it in specific liquids. I know of aspirin, and that's what I use to wash it. And I keep it, and that pepper I can give to people, and they can grow it two or three years later, because it's been well looked after. No uh, microorganisms from the atmosphere touching the body of the pepper is going to take it and not allow it to grow. It will still remain viable. That's what the word is. You grow your pepper plant, you may put four or five in just one small pot, and you keep these indoors. Because you want to be able to locate your pepper plants. You don't want them to go missing and then you're starting to wonder where the pepper plants are. You want to know where they are when they start germinating. It will first come up with two leaves. Because some of us may not be very aware how the pepper plant will grow. So that's why we should grow the pepper plants indoors. When it comes out with the first two leaves, these are called seed leaves, and they are green. And then you know your, your pepper has germinated. Pepper plants will take between two weeks and three weeks to germinate, depending on how you treat it. When the pepper plant has germinated, they grow very slowly, but they're still going to get there. So in about six weeks, you would have a small pepper plant that you can now put into a bag outside and you know where you grow your pepper plant. So if you've chosen to grow your pepper plant in a bag or in a bed or on the ground, you are going to have specific ways of looking after them. First, you want to ensure that while you're looking after your pepper plant and it's growing, you don't have any critters coming along or putting them. You don't want any pests coming along, damaging them. So you want to watch out for the pests of peppers. Usually these are tiny insects, mites. They will be growing on the leaves and walking around and sucking the leaves of the plant. What you do is you take a look at the leaves of your plant. You look at it at the top and look at it below. and if there are no insects on it, then they are all right. One reason that will discourage insects is if your plant 
are located in a very sunny spot that is it's not shaded because pepper plants want a lot of sunlight apart from using the sunlight to carry out the sunlight, also discourages all these effects from growing on their leaves so when your pepper plant is located in a sunny location it goes very well and strong and this is now the first year of the pepper's life in about three months it will start fruiting after it has flowered when the pepper plant starts fruiting you will be harvesting it you will probably harvest it for the next two months and you see that the production level of this pepper plant has dropped this is not the end of the pepper plant's life it's just the time for you to allow the pepper plant to rest and what you would need to do is cut off some of the branches that are on the plant by cutting off some of the branches that are on the plant you would encourage new branches to grow and this plant knows something is happening i need to grow stronger it's just like we we'll probably all have experience with weeds if you have a weed growing somewhere and you pull it off but you don't take out the roots when the weed is going to grow again you are going to be saying to yourself it's even bigger that's exactly how the paper grows when you trim it and you leave it when it grows back it's going to grow a bigger and stronger stem and this is what we want we want it to be because when it grows this bigger and stronger stem, then you will see that it's capable of carrying more peppers. It's capable of producing because it has more space on its body. It has more branches all over. And there's going to be a lot more peppers on these plants. There are times you would have walked around or seen a picture and there's a pepper plant and it has hundreds of peppers on it that's not a pepper plant that has grown in one year that's a pepper plant that's probably two or three years old and that is how it's been created the branches have to be cut so that the pepper plant can rest go into a form of dormancy slow growth it's not dead and then when we have spring again and we have conducive weather again the pepper plant will spring back to life and start growing. So please take note, a lot of people are not aware of this, that the pepper plant is able to grow for five, six years. And the second, third, fourth and fifth years are its highest productivity level years. By the sixth year, some will slow down, some may still carry on, but if you can keep a pepper plant alive for five years, you would have a lot of pepper that you have harvested from it. And one thing I also want to stress is the possibility of growing these peppers just on your balcony or a little space in your backyard. When you say, I don't have space for gardening, my backyard is full of weeds and everything. You can just get a bag, collect some of the soil, put it in the bag, and grow it. I showed you yesterday several types of bags that you can use. All the shopping bags. These stuff bags can all be used. You just take the soil off the ground, keep it for about two, three weeks, come back, take off all the weeds that are growing in it, and you can mix in some food waste that you have from the house, some fertilizers, some chicken poop, manures, then you have soil for growing your peppers. Because you don't always have access to soil that you get from the shops. You can get the soil from the back of your house and use it to grow your peppers. This is all right. Because when I was young, the pepper plants that were just growing, they were pepper plants that came out of the sink into the backyard. And they were growing there 
until they reached maturity and we were harvesting it. So it means the soil out there is all right for growing things. You can't beat the soil that is already growing weeds. If you see a soil and weeds are growing there, then that soil is good for growing plants. You just need to put more waste, food waste, chicken poop to prepare it. And then after two weeks, while you're growing your seeds indoors for about six to eight weeks, you put it into the soil that you have prepared outside. This is one perfect way of producing, oh, this is making a lot of noise. This is one very good way of producing a lot of peppers for ourselves without it being such a big stress to get the peppers done. You just need a bag. Make sure you get a strong bag in this situation, not just an ordinary shopping bag. It has to be one of those tough bags. Some of them can be black. They use it for um, heavy duty shopping. You can just, or even sometimes they use to pack foods, they use to pack food stuffs in the market. You take the thread off from the top, you put soil in, and you grow your peppers. This is one sure way of having a source of food right at the back of your own house, even in your flat. I've got a friend across the road there, and she started growing some things right out of her balcony because she's always said to me, I live in a flat, I live in a flat, and I said, oh, you are actually directly receiving that morning sun all day long. I said, you can grow some things, in, put them in that balcony. It doesn't have to be so many if you don't want it to be many. If you grow just two pepper plants, you're going to be surprised at how much you'll be harvesting when your pepper plants come in. They will produce so much peppers, more than you could have expected. And everyone is happy to see, to eat the food that you've grown yourself. You can grow these pepper plants and they will come in handy. It could just be a time that, oh, I haven't got the peppers that I bought from the shop. And you look at the pepper plant and it's got some peppers growing on it. This is one good way of using our spaces to produce a little food. And when your friends come to visit and they see it, you'd explain to them, I just put the soil in, I put the pepper in, and it's growing. Then everybody can copy it and everyone is growing food. We don't have to have so much shortage of food or so much dependence on the markets to be producing foods for us. We can also do a little bit of this, even as a pastime. You come in, you throw it there, and you start to water it, and it goes well. Please give me a like on my video. Thank you. And you, you, you find that it's it works well because you have um, food at your fingertips just at the arm's length when you take your your your, your food from your surroundings it hasn't gone a great distance so it's actually very fresh it's not like food that you are saying no oh, eating fresh peppers but this pepper was grown a thousand kilometers away you can grow a few and actually see how it's done. And some of you actually watching this video, because I know a lot of you are going to watch it later. It doesn't have to be you growing these things. You can share this video with somebody else and they may be in a position to be able to grow the peppers and know that they can keep their peppers alive for more than one year. So that the pepper that you have grown, if you like it, then you can try to keep it alive. You can try to keep that pepper alive for as long as five, six years. Because the pepper is not an annual plant. The pepper plant is a perennial plant. 
it grows on and on. Um, I've seen a pepper plant that is taller than me before, and it's covered in peppers. It's in Eden, Eden, Eden. It's covered in peppers, and they have to write on it, please do not touch these peppers, as they are very hot. And because the peppers on that plant was just too many, it was surprising. It's because this pepper plant has been there for years, and every year they've been trimming it, it grows back, it produces a lot more peppers, they would harvest it, because if you don't harvest peppers from a plant, the production will reduce. That's the thing. But when you harvest it, and at the end of the year you harvest everything, you send a message to that pepper plant that we need the peppers. So the following year, when it comes back, it's going to grow a lot of peppers. If you allow the last few peppers on your plant to just stay there, that pepper will feel, okay, end of production. They probably had enough. But if you harvest every pepper off your plant, that plant will know there is a need for me to big up and produce more pepper plant, more, more pepper foods for people to, to, to have. So it's just a sort of response and stimulus. You stimulate your pepper plant to produce more by harvesting it. Vigorous harvesting of a pepper plant would make the pepper plant to produce a lot of peppers. If you don't harvest it, it's getting the message that you don't need a lot of pepper plants. Now, some people would say, if you now go out and you harvest your pepper plants and you don't need it, how do you store it? There are several ways of storing pepper plants, but there's one that is so incredible. You hardly have to do anything. You don't have to freeze it. You don't have to, to refuse it. You just take your pepper. This is a pepper plant I harvested. I've got a few, I've got a few of them in here. You just take your pepper and give it a slice on one side to open up the pepper. You take the third pepper, you slice it. The slice is in there. I can't really see it anywhere now. That's the slice in the pep in the pepper. You can see that I've sliced this pepper plant. You just slice it and then you arrange them all flat, maybe on newspaper or in a tray. You arrange them and they will air dry. The pepper would air dry and that's all right. When you want to cook, you put it in water and you're good to go. It's actually what is done when you buy powdered dry pepper from the market. When you buy powdered dry pepper, this is how it is produced. The peppers have been slit and dried and afterwards they've been ground. They ground it, they make powder out of it and sell it. So it's still the same pepper. So if you think in your mind of producing too much peppers now, this is one very good way of storing your peppers. You can slit it, leave it to air dry, and then you will find it works very well because it's not going to, not a single piece of it will get spoiled. But if you leave it as whole peppers, it will collapse. All the juices in it will not be able to escape and then it will start to depreciate or rot. The moment you slit it, the air can circulate. There isn't any liquid inside the pepper. It's just the pepper casing and the seeds attached to, to, the, to the top. So when you cut a pepper plant, you don't have any juices flowing from it. I mean, a pepper and fruit. In the case of large bell peppers, you would need to cut them and keep an eye out that when the juices are 
trying to, to dry, some of them will flow out onto the surface that you place it on. So if you place it in a tray, you would need to change it into another tray, like maybe every other day, just so that you can collect the little liquid that is below the peppers, and that will help those peppers to dry quicker. Because if it has to be lying on its side and there's some juice that has poured out of it because of its big size and it's still lying in that juice, the thing we're going to get as our result may not be as good as if you do it this way. You need to be shifting it so that it's not just lying inside that liquid place. Sometimes you just raise it up and wipe it with tissue. That's also another way of doing it. You can raise each of those peppers as they are getting dried. You wipe under them with tissue to make sure that your tray is dry. And this would encourage the pepper to go on drying in air, not drying in a half submerged into your own juices. The pepper will dry and at the end of the day, you have um, dry pepper. So people would actually put the peppers outside in the sun and this is called sun-dried pepper very good to taste doesn't taste any different from the one that is fresh in fact it almost tastes better when you have sun-dried pepper it has this smoky um, um, feeling to it because it has become more concentrated when it's being used one way of gardening is to make sure that how if this is produced they are not going to be producing well. but you want to be using pepper from the food every day all year long then you have to make sure you know how to store it so that it still remains fresh. You can see how dry these ones are. You can almost hear the, the, the sound of it just going around in the, in the bowl. So you dry your peppers and you know I've got a lot of peppers to use for the rest of the day. But the whole package of it. If you have space and you wish to do that, you can just package them them in your freezer and you go out you harvest again you wait you allow all of them to get right you wash it put it in the freezer it depends on what form of storage you prefer to use but peppers don't need to go bad because we have so many ways we need to use it. I've seen that you to chop it up you chop the peppers up so they are now occupies more space especially the large peppers. You chop the large peppers up. If you chop an entire basket of large peppers up, it's not going to be more than your bowl. That makes it easier to store as fresh peppers if you want to store it as fresh peppers. So all these ways work very neatly for somebody growing food and you're not expecting it to go to waste. Because a lot of people that have seen grow their peppers and then after they've had enough they begin to look at the rest as oh we've had enough and everything that is not sending especially to peppers you can do that with some other tomatoes because it's not saying that coming back next year tomatoes grow easily you can grow another tomato next year it's going to produce a lot of foods but peppers don't produce so much food in the first year. Thank you very much, Angela's Busy Bees. I'm so grateful. You're welcome. Peppers don't produce so much in the first year. This is the reason why we need to keep them alive until the second and third and fourth years so that we can be able to. It takes a lot of pepper to germinate that my pepper. If you are thinking that, and then next year, oh God, I'm going to have to germinate pepper again. All you have to do is keep it alive. Keep it alive. Either it's over 
winter, if you're living in a place where you have winter, you bring it, you put it indoors, you keep it with fewer leaves, cut off a lot of the stems, then it works out that this pepper knows it's time to rest. And when we have spring again the following year, just like weeds will come back, this pepper will come back and it will come back stronger. And it's going to produce more peppers than the first year. This is the reason why we should keep our peppers alive. The fact that when it comes back the following year, it's going to be bigger and it's going to produce more peppers. But having a first year pepper, which I had done for a long time before I discovered keeping them alive until the following year, I would just grow peppers every year, every year, and it would just produce a little amount, and that's what I would have to make do with. Now that I've discovered that, I get a lot of peppers from my plants because they are growing in the second year, and going into their third year, they are going to produce a lot more as well. You see some peppers, and when they come along with fruiting, the amount of peppers on it, you would know that this did not grow in one in one year. It will have such a strong stem, and I used to wonder, how did your pepper plants get this big? It's because that pepper plant did not start growing this year. That pepper plant has been alive for like 18 months, 24 months, three years, that pepper plant has been alive for a long time. Because what we have to take note of is that for pepper plants to produce maybe during the summer, it means we planted it just the winter or the spring before. So it's not even a year. It's less than a year old. It can't produce so much. It's not so mature. A lot of people would advise that the first flowers on your pepper plant, you should take it off. I don't do that, because I would rather just have those. And and uh, let and um, before some things would happen. But now that I know I can keep it alive until the following year, then I know how to manage the pepper plants better. Because it's not just a race of, oh, now it's um, already July, it's already August, September. By September, the pepper plant is no longer so prolific. By October, there aren't any more new plants on it. It keeps flowering and flowering. And those flowers will take forever. To, we will be flicking it and flicking it and saying, oh, we are pollinating, pollinating. It's because of the weather. The weather has changed. The plant is not like trying to produce anymore because it has produced a lot during the month of July, August, September. The plant wants to rest. And this is what we want the plant to do for us. We want the plant to rest and come back. Because a returning pepper plant will produce about times five of what it produced in the first year. It produces a lot. Bigger peppers, more peppers. This is the type of pepper plant we want to be growing. And if I say, oh, I don't have space, I don't have um, time, but grow your pepper plant plants in bags, just this shopping bag, put some soil in it and grow your pepper plants in it. If you can't get soil to buy, scrape some soil from your backyard, put it in, watch it, you see some seed, some weeds growing, pick them off, put them back inside, they are just going to be feeding the, the soil and then food scraps fertilizers from the shop, but don't depend solely on fertilizers. Depending solely on fertilizers will strip the soil out of the soil. You have to be using food scraps in your garden soil because that is what the plants want. That is what the earthworms will be comfortable in. The earthworms will help to keep your soil loose so that the roots can grow. If the soil is held together and the roots cannot grow, then the plants will not be too happy. Yeah, yes. This is one reason why 
planting your peppers in containers initially is actually a very good idea. If you have large containers, you plant your peppers in large containers. But you can also plant in ground. Like if you're a large scale farmer and you have a lot of space, you can plant them in ground. But at the time when the weather changes and these things can no longer survive outside, you can go out or put it with your um, shovel because you need to cut off some of the roots anyway, or put it with a shovel and then put it into a smaller pot. So you need to have maybe some bags prepared for the winter time. So if you are growing even in ground during the year when it's producing, you can now bring it indoors during the winter or during the time when it needs to rest. You can put it in your garage or put it in your of a utilities room, put it in your kitchen. It depends on where you have the space, but make sure it's receiving a little bit of sunlight and don't take off all the leaves. Let each plant still have maybe two, three, or four leaves on it. But you know, it's, it's, it's a bit um, painful for me every year to cut off. I, I just stand there. And say, oh, so I cut it. I'm saying, oh my. But then you have to cut off the stems and be left with that main stem that is at the base. Because you will see that that main stem is actually turning, trying try to look like a tree. It's turning into brown. And then the first forking into two, where it forks into a Y, and it fork into three, it may now be, you can stop at that point. If your plant is older, that if now your plant is a two year old, you will see that browning that is coming in from the base would have cracked all the way up. You can now leave two forks onto your onto your plant, and if you have one Y front here, one Y on the other on the other side, and you keep it indoors. So even if you are growing in ground, you uproot it and put it into a bag or a small pot. So it means you can even put like, like here, half four of them in here, half three of them in here. You can put them all together in one pot and bring them in during the winter. This would help them to go dormant and then the rest and come back the following year. Thank you very much as well because it's always very good to see the results these peppers give in the second year. It's 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 a big surprise because when I'm visit some other people's gardens, I would see the peppers. I was like, "What are you giving the doctor? Oh, it's just an organic garden. We use uh, food scraps. I said, I use food scraps too. I use um, manures and chicken poops too. But my peppers aren't this big. And I say, hey, how old is your pepper? I say, how old are so how has how? How can you be talking about how old the pepper is? And then he says, me, your pepper has to be like three or, or three years old for it to be growing this amount. And, I, and then I went to learn how to keep your pepper alive. So every year you need to put it and bring it in. Or you grow it in a pot so that you can bring that pot in and the pepper can rest. It depends on the type of weather where you are. If you grow in a pot, if you have space, if you don't have space, you can grow in a bag and just place that bag maybe in a tray in a, in a, in a, on your balcony. You don't want to ruin the surface in your balcony. That's why I say you should put it in a tray. The pepper plants will grow there and you'll just be harvesting your own pepper for yourself. It will be the choice pepper that you actually want. And you can use that as a place where you be cutting up your food waste, all the uh, mango mango peels, pineapple peels, and everything, you would cut it up, keep it in a, a, a bowl together. At the end of the week, you put it in for the, for the plant and cover it with more soil. This will be a very good feed for your soil, and your pepper plants will just be having fun. 
And a lot of people will say, oh, I will forget to work my plants. If you are putting food scraps in, you don't even need to water it so much because the pepper plant does not want to be watered too much. If not, the pepperiness, the chili of it will be diluted. And at this point, I'm talking about chili peppers, the ones that are very hot. If you water it more, the hotness will be diluted. If you water it less, the hotness will be very concentrated. So that's the thing that actually helps peppers to remain hot. But if you're watching your plants and you're doing it, try to make it regular so that the plant doesn't fall into stress and then you give it water and it falls back because it falls into stress when it is not watered. That is, the leaves are about to start getting dry. Even if the leaves on a pepper plant is drooping, it means that pepper plant has suffered a lot because pepper plants will stay up for a long time. If you don't water a pepper plant for a whole two weeks, it will still be there. But then, if you're planting something two weeks, can you imagine as human beings, we have to drink every day, so make time to water your plants, even if it's once a week, that would be good enough for them. But if you are going by and your pepper plants not being watered for a whole week and then a whole two weeks, then that pepper plant will not be very productive. You have to balance the amount of water you give your pepper plants. Don't let them be too dry, but make sure that if you want them to be hot peppers, you don't overwater them. That's just how it works out. We have large peppers as well, I mean, sweet large peppers, and those ones, you don't want to overwater them. The reason for this is because of the mites, the aphids, they like soggy areas, and then they latch onto the leaves of your pepper plant, and it takes a long time for the bell peppers to mature enough for you to be able to pluck it. They will start to make holes onto the pepper, and this is not very good. So these are all reasons why you want to keep your pepper plants from being overwatered, either because you want it to maintain its chilly hotness, or you want to ensure that you don't have too many of those Ants, ants especially make holes on, on large peppers. They will go in at the point where the pepper is joined, the joint. Ants will go in under there, they go in there so many times and they will make a hole and go into the pepper. And you don't want that. This is because the large pepper takes a longer time, you know, it's the large to, to get big and ripen. You want to watch out for the insects flying around your plant and also the ones trying to stay if you keep it too wet. You want to ensure that it's not too wet and they'll be discouraged. Ants only come along when a place is dry. For example, I have this a group, a um, composting group, and um, somebody will say, what is the surefire way to know if your compost is dry? is ants. If your soil is dry, it's ants. Because if your soil is just at a normal level, ants will not come. They don't want waggy, um, um, soggy soil. They won't be able to work well. So you can use that as a measure. If you see ants trying to walk around in your garden, it means there's a dry portion where they are able to stay in. So you need to wet your garden. Make sure you don't have ants walking around and um, destroying your peppers. It's peppers mainly that ants like to, to destroy, that I find um, unacceptable. If they can be walking around on the flowers, because I grow flowers as well, they can be walking around on the flowers, they can be walking around on the roses and other things. They don't destroy those, so they are very welcome. But walking around on your peppers, they can make a hole on the large peppers, and that becomes something you don't like. It's yeah. When you bring in your pepper plants, you will have 
a very, very good um, product the following year because pepper plants will surprise you when they come back. The stems will be bigger, the stems will be stronger, and then when they start producing peppers, while some people are still struggling with um, I'm growing my pepper, my pepper has reached flowering stage, your pepper has already flowered and it's already setting fruit. That is what is called growing pepper the right way because your pepper has this front end jump that you've already given it. It's not starting from little baby stage anymore. It's already at that stage where all it has to do is bring out the new leaves, bring out the new branches and start producing uh, new peppers for you. A lot of people's peppers will still be uh, ramping all over on the ground. They're deciding whether they want to germinate or not. One thing I like about overwintered pepper is early production. It starts producing early and then right through the production season it is producing so that I can actually go there and harvest my peppers even when they are not yet bright red. I can harvest them while they are a bit reddish green and it will start producing a new set of peppers for me. So the number of times I would go out and harvest my peppers increases incredibly. And I just thought this is a wonderful characteristic of these plants. Those plants teach us a lot of things when we relate to them. And when you go out and you see another person's garden and you see something surprising there and say, why is your own a pepper plant better than mine because my pepper plant doesn't produce as this and the person will tell you because gardeners don't keep secrets we would like to share this is how you're supposed to have done it don't throw your pepper plants away at the end of the year keep it let it come back the following year and i was like oh my days and i got a lot of peppers that is a sure fire way of having more peppers than somebody that has a very wide space of land to produce peppers because your single or your two peppers that you have coming back are going to produce more than an entire 10 peppers that somebody is just starting in that year and i also have 10 peppers here i have three in here three in here and four in the middle so my peppers are 10, although I have two others um, out there, but these ones that I have there here are, are 10 in number, just like uh, just like yours. So I'm just saying, oh, I will just keep them and hopefully at least six or eight will survive because sometimes they may not, for one reason or the other, they may be too warm, it will be too cold, it will be this or that, but at least you should have about eight of your pepper plants surviving and coming back. Uh, even sometimes, some peppers will come back and I will realize that, oh, it's not even the one I liked, but the ones that I like, when they come back, I just feel you, uh, thank God. Because I like the fact that this specific pepper that started producing very late has come back again. Yeah, I used to just grow so many peppers. In fact, in those days, I used to buy peppers from the shops, not the seeds. I would buy the pepper plant from the shop and at the end of the year, I would let it die. That All those peppers is still paying me till now. Because what I now realize is that those peppers were actually not one year old. That's why they produced a lot. So I should have kept them for the third year. But I just thought, ah, now I know how to grow peppers by myself and my peppers are growing well. But my peppers were not producing enough peppers. So if I ever buy peppers from the shops again, that is um, pugs that are plant seedlings, I'm going to keep it well and make sure it produces in the third year and the fourth year. That is when you are really, really growing peppers. When you are able to bring them over the year into the next season, that is when you are really producing peppers. And peppers are 
such a nice part of our diet. They are this versatile. You use peppers with so many dishes. People who don't eat peppers, you use pepper spray as um, something against um, pests in the garden. So we found out that the pepper plant has a lot of advantages. You will just be like, mm, yeah, yeah. If I have a first year plant, the number of bell peppers, if it's um, the long ones, the jalapenos, I'll get a lot. If the um, scotch bonnets that I just showed, I would get, the lot that I'm taking is about 50. The, this one, I would get about um, 40. But you see the bell peppers, just like you said, you get about five. And sometimes I would have to quickly go and harvest it before it's ripe. Because if I just say I want that pepper to ripen, the ants will get it. It's so difficult. But if it's a second year pepper, it will actually be more resistant to this ants and this pet pests. They won't come along it uh, as much as they do a very short plant, you know, that is still quite young. When it has grown big, because when it's coming back, the stem is taller. It will be more sturdy. The ants won't uh, be thinking of uh, going, going on the plant that is serious business. They will stay away. But when the plant is still quite young, the ants will be trying it, the mites will be trying it, the aphids will be trying it. They just give your garden a big, big struggle. Second year pepper plants, third year pepper plants, you will now enjoy your harvest each time. Only five. That's exactly my experience. It's first year peppers. But now that we are going to be keeping it till the following year, I'm looking forward to large, larger harvests of my pepper plants. There were times I would plant 20 pepper plants because if I'm going to get such a small amount from it, I have to now plant so many and I haven't got a lot of space. So having the opportunity to plant more peppers, um, I mean, to, to keep my peppers alive, it's given me a chance to have more when I'm harvesting my peppers. So you don't always have to grow your peppers in pots, you can use a bag. I have this bag the trolley um, case and it's some bad to have this tough material because that pepper plant is going to be growing for about um, four or five years i will be planting peppers inside the old ones that i have because i have some old ones of this bag that i've just put thrown outside i put an avocado in one if i plant my pepper in this because it is very tough then it will be able to grow well in some places because I don't have a lot of space. So I would say, well, where will I put this? But if it's a bag, you can just squeeze it into a space and it grows up into the sun and it works. That's exactly what I did with my potato. Just put the potatoes in the bag and I shoved it into a corner and they started growing up. And I had potatoes to harvest. So it always works well when our peppers or our potatoes grow well because we now see that this is how this thing wants to be treated. They actually teach us, they show us how they want to be to be treated by 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 the, the, the way they produce. If your pepper plant produces a lot the following year, if you grow a pepper again, you will always keep it. You will always keep your pepper plant until the following year. And if you don't have a lot of space or you don't have a garden at all because you're living in a flat, grow it in a bag. You place it on your balcony. It, it's, a fl it's a plant. It is producing white flowers. So it's just like any other decorative thing. The only thing is that when the fruits come, you are going to eat it. There's nothing wrong with that. You can grow just two peppers, look after it, and 
you're getting um, a pepper all year round. Or if you don't want to start from seed, maybe because you haven't grown fruits before in the past, you can buy two peppers from the garden center, put it in a space in your balcony facing the sun and let it grow. You just water it. When harvest time comes, you have a lot of peppers. It's always rewarding when you have a few things growing in your garden. Even the flowers that I grow in my garden, some of them are edible. I have the borage. You put borage in your ice cube, you put it on your salad. You just find out that a lot of things that are growing in the garden, you can just add them and you've got the food going. It's nice, it's great to have the little space to grow something. And we all have this. We all have a little space that we can put a small bag in and grow something. If you're growing something and you're living with your uncle or you're living here with your auntie, you just take permission. Oh, please, can I grow this thing here? They don't want you to grow it there for a permanent. You can start growing it in a, in a bag. When you get a space where you're going to take it to, then you take it along. It just works out in so many ways that you can always grow food for yourself very conveniently. And if you're living in a place and hope places like, oh, we can't start producing food here, then just grow two. You don't have to grow 100. You don't have to turn the whole place into oh, my neighborhood. Do you all say I'm growing food? Grow two peppers. That's all right. And it's going to produce a lot for you. That's my promise. You also consider storing what you have grown. I mentioned it just now. There's no pepper storing problem. What you do is give it a slit. Give each one a slit. You give it a slit and you lay them all out on paper. They will just go dry. That's it. When it's dry, when you want to cook it, take off this little stalk. Because it needs this stalk on it because you don't want anything to enter it. Although it's now open, but they actually target this joint for entering. So that's when you now take off this stalk, you put this soaked in water, wash, and you blend it along with your cooking. If you want to chop it, you do just that. If it's the large bell peppers, you slit those ones into about four each. If they slit into four each, you place them and they start drying. They will air dry and you just have dry peppers, little, little ones all over. They will just be so good like that. But you need to be wiping under the tray for large peppers because they will bring out some liquid after a few days. And then after that, they can carry on drying. Or the final way, if you want to store your peppers, you can store them in the freezer. You can store them cut up if it's large peppers. This one you don't need to cut up, just pack it together and squeeze it into the freezer. If it's the large peppers, it's going to take a lot of space. You can cut each one into four. Cut them into four um vertically on the plant on the fruit. Like four. Up top to down, top to down, cut it into four. A basket of large peppers will only take a space. Of a small bowl, a small packet, but then you've cut it into four. When you come and you want to, to use it, you just crack one off or two. If that's the amount you need for the meal you want to make, you are, you are on your way. That is how you grow your food and you know that as gardeners, you can't go without because there will always be one thing or the other growing in your garden that you can pick. Like right now, I'm already seeing a lot of even things that are considered like, oh, that one is a weed, um, dandelions, they are already growing. And you can just take the head of the dandelion, you can take the leaves of the dandelion and use it to, to, to make your salad or, mm. or vegetable. They always work well with somebody who is a gardener because 
as gardeners, we all share, we all say to each other, yes, this part of the plant is edible. This part of the plant you can eat. So if you find it growing around in your garden, it's edible. That is actually called foraging. When somebody says to you, oh, foraging, it doesn't mean go into the forest three miles away and go and be looking at the ground. It means go in your backyard. If you say your backyard is full of weed, go in your backyard and try to identify which ones are actually edible. There was a day I went into someone and he was saying my house is covered in weed and the place was full of amaranthesi. That is shoko yokoto. I'm like, these things, these are food. She was doubting me until an elderly person came along and told her too that yes, that thing, that thing is food, considering it to be weed. So a lot of these plants that people would consider to be, oh, not food, are actually food. Yes, freezing them is a very, very good way because you take it, you freeze it, and you can just bring it out and use it for any style of dishes that you want. It works very well. It's a, a surefire way of you reduce that from what you're going to be buying a lot of. I'm not saying you're not going to be buying any more peppers or anything. It depends on the number of you that are in the house and the amount of space that you have. But if you are not very many in your house, you may not have to be buying peppers again. If you are already growing it and you're harvesting a lot, you just harvest this and use it for your meal and your pops, your uncle. If you're very many, you have to buy more, but at least you will still know that you've saved some of your um, of your money and you are eating what you have grown. And that makes someone happy. Growing and eating what you have grown, it actually makes me happy. Right from the time I was young and we were able to grow a few uh, water leaf, um, spinach, malabar, and things in our backyard, I was blown away. I was like, these things taste nicer than the ones from the shop. And everybody's like, mm, you like free things. I was like, yeah, I like free things. And I like working on them as well. And it's not back-breaking work. It doesn't take so much effort to put the paper in there, leave it in the sun. It's the sun that is doing the work. So whether you plant something, or you don't plant something, as the Lord wills, the sun will shine. So why are we wasting the sunshine? The sunshine is just out there to keep us healthy and to give us food. Because if you put a plant outside and it's photosynthesizing and producing food, you will harvest it for yourself. If all you put outside are just flowers, flowers, flowers that you can't eat. I have a lot of flowers. I'm also a flower grower. I grow roses, I grow dahlias, I grow zinnias, I grow uh, corn silk. I, in fact, I don't even want to go into the carnations, uh, dianthus. I don't want to go irises, gladiolus. I grow flowers. But if all I'm growing are flowers, then I'm not even learning how to grow anything that is food. Anybody will say, so what's the purpose of this? Yes, you're growing the flowers. You can use it in competitions. You can use it in displays and things. But at the end of the day, when you win something at that competition, it all boils down to eating. Because food is one thing we all have every day. We all have food every day. This is hardly a day that somebody will say, oh, no. Let's not eat for the next uh, three or four days. You are not going to see that. Just without thinking about it, you just order food, cook food, collect food from somebody, and you are eating. All those things were grown. So we need to learn a bit about how to grow these things so that when I am growing some, and my friend Angela is growing some. 
and my friend Tony in Little Farmer's Farm is growing some, Cherry King is growing some, and we find that we have a society. Welcome, thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much. When we are all growing some, left, right, center, we will find that that food surcharge that is being predicted for the world will not happen. We will not suffer food shortage. Because when they say food shortage, it's not food shortage for, for, for cows or food shortage for insects. When they say food shortage is about to happen, it's food shortage for humans. So why don't we as humans start trying to produce a little, like I produce a little of this, you produce that. And in fact, what happens is stick to what you know how to produce very well. I like to produce a lot of tomatoes and peppers. And I have friends that bring to me onions. Because I try growing onions, it doesn't always work well because I'm always cutting off the green bits and using it to make a fried rice. So some of my tomatoes go to other families. And they come here and they bring me an entire, entire bowl of onions, um, cabbage. I don't, I'm, I'm only going to start growing cabbages now. But every year they bring me cabbage. So when you're growing something and you give someone because you, you grow a lot of it, you also get from another person. It doesn't have to be the person you give some of your crop to that will give you crop. Somebody else will just come and give you. Some people will even come and give you some plants. My neighbor's parents have come and they've given me zucchinis over and over and over every year. So the zucchinis that I grow, and I just harvest about two or three of it, I didn't buy them. Some other family gave them to me. So when you grow food, it's for the entire human race, for all of us to, to, to have something to eat. And that's how it's best for us to handle these things. If you have the little space, but you know how to make sure that when you grow your pepper, you can keep it alive. You make sure you bring it in, you cut off the leaves. It only has a few leaves left. Then you can produce a lot more peppers than you need. You can give some to a friend and a friend without you thinking about it, can give you an entire whole plant. Because I got an entire whole zucchini plant, which I was grateful for, because it soon started flowering and fruiting, and the harvest was really, really impressive. And, and, and because when you are buying your seeds packet, you know, there will always be a lot of seeds in it. So you will get a lot of, of plants. You have plants to share with other people, and other people also have plans that they, they want to share with you. That is one way that we can ensure this food shortage that's being predicted for the world is not going to happen to us. It's not going to happen to our children's generation or our children's children because we are going to fix this. We are going to fix this. All of us together. It doesn't have to be you going to plant and everything. I'm sorry, I don't want to make this too long <laughs> so that people can come back and watch it. Thank you very much. Um, as I can see you, Britain Farm Homestead. I really appreciate you. So that people can come along and watch it later. If it's too long, it will be discouraging. Nobody would like to watch it. So what I'm just trying to say is that when I'm producing a little and you producing a little and we are learning how to actually produce it well so that we're not wasting time in the garden and wasting energy, then we will produce a lot that we can feed the world, feed ourselves, feed our neighbors, feed the world and we have healthy food right around. I hope this can happen. I believe it can, because it has happened before. Thank you very much for watching. I really appreciate you all. It's as if I should carry on talking and jabbering, blah, blah, blah. 
but thank you. I really appreciate you. And I'll bring this um, live stream to an end here. Bye. If you have any questions, write it, and then I can just talk about that before I go now. And you can, if you're just joining, you can watch the main things that I mentioned at the beginning about bringing in our plants and everything. Thank you very much, Anchela. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Have a nice evening. Have a lovely evening. Thank you. Bye. Thank you for coming. The live stream has ended actually. So you may want to watch from the beginning. I'm going to have to write that on a card. This last stream has ended. If you have watched from the beginning. <laughs> Thank you. Much appreciated.